name's Ocelot. Big boss. You know who I am. A certain man gave me a job to do. Two, actually. First was to tell you I didn't get enough screen time. Second, the voice box told me to make sure you subscribe and like. Video game character development is such an important feature. Development of one's character from both beginning and to the end of a game. Of course, one of character beings such as Ocelot, who would serve being the majority in the Metal Gear franchise as the protagonist, and a good one at that. Being a triple spy, taking down the likes of the Patriot system, everything would tie in really nicely into the game. Metal Gear Solid V included, but I just feel as if Metal Gear Solid V, amongst many, did not put Ocelot in the limelight and spotlight as much as it should have. He felt like he was more of a backdrop character. And whilst the story development was more or less built around Venom Snake, that's understandable. But given on most Metal Gear Solid games, Ocelot has technically always been in the forefront with the characters. And that's not to say that in MGS5 we didn't get some amazing story character development. In fact, we discovered a whole new side of Ocelot that really tied in with Metal Gear Solid 1 really well. It really feels like a lifetime ago when Metal Gear Solid 5 was announced in 2013. MGS5 had several trailers, but of course I'm going back to the first one. And I can remember watching this and having a great sense of nostalgia and excitement for what was to come. As we all knew, it was going to expand onto the story of Big Boss and how he created his private army, an outer heaven as such. But it was nice to also see returning faces that we'd seen from the original games and how they was going to play out in, in this beautifully flawed masterpiece that would be the Phantom Pain. I don't know about you guys, but I had this sense of feeling like something was right in the world again. By the time Metal Gear Solid 5 was out, I was broke as shit. But I had my secondhand chunky PlayStation 3 along with Metal Gear Solid 5 when it came out. Thankfully, it was released for PlayStation 3 and not just PlayStation 4. Being inside game, I obviously wanted to go and buy the Phantom Pain. And in doing so, I saw a few people having the privilege to buy this limited edition Day 1 Diamond Dark PlayStation 4. And man, I was devastated knowing that I couldn't afford it at the time. But I was happy and grateful enough to know that I could actually afford the game itself. And to my surprise, having this long, interesting conversation about Metal Gear to one of the game workers, he gave me this, like, limited edition steelbook CD case for free. There was like a handful out there on the table. I don't know why he gave it to me for free. Maybe he was impressed with the amount of Metal Gear knowledge that I knew, but either way, I was happy. So far, I'm absolutely mesmerized. The hospital scene was so thrilling and beautiful. The way it was done, the fact that we came out from this nine-year coma from the events of Ground Zeroes, to see reappearing faces like Psychomantis from Metal Gear Solid 1 and seeing Volgin, the man on fire from Metal Gear Solid 3. And of course, as most of us would do at the time, believe that where Big Boss was be awaiting what was to come, such as Ocelot, only Big Boss's greatest ally. If I could go back during that time when I had that same feeling, man I would, because it was an amazing sense of the unknown. Because yes, whilst the truth is Metal Gear Solid 5 is a great game, it was massively flawed, and there were so many gaps for where the story really should have expanded on. But man, at the very start of the beginning of the game, it really was a breathtaking part of what made Metal Gear Solid V such a cinematic and beautiful experience. Don't take too long getting used to your new self. Hang on. Miller's been captive for 10 days. Not much time left. Weather will clear shortly. Storm's passing. It was nice to see at the beginning of the Phantom Pain how massively involved it seemed Ocelot would be. Because after nine years of being in a coma, keeping up with world affairs is going to be difficult. And who else than the triple crossing, gun spinning badass who has a bad attitude? But of course, in Metal Gear Solid 5, things have naturally changed. 
at this point you could say Ocelot is in his middle ages now, he's definitely gotten older. So with that, there comes a sense of more maturity. He isn't as over the top as what we remember him in Metal Gear Solid 3. You could say it's because he was still young, and at that age, especially when it comes to men, they get quite competitive. What is that stance? Huh. That gun. <laughs> 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 Filthy American dog! Being the son of the boss, Ocelot's already going to be naturally talented. In fact, we see it so many times that he can take out several people in one go with his gun. But of course, he's still young. He's naive. He's yet to learn into the character that he eventually becomes. But I don't think that excuses the actual characteristics that we're used to seeing, especially in Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 and 4. <laughs> we can see a big difference between how he is in number 5. He seems to have lost that eccentric, quirky attitude that he has. Metal Gear Solid 3, for me, was the best game, because we both had just the perfect amount of cinematic cutscenes tied in with a more immersive gameplay. I don't think you get many games like Metal Gear Solid where each character has their own immersive storytelling, and how they tie in with each other, just like that of Big Boss and Ocelot, which would go on to develop some sort of a brotherhood, a friendship. It adds to the storytelling towards MGS5 because we can see in MGS3 how Ocelot builds up such a great respect and love for the legend that is Big Boss. What's your name? Snake. No. Not that name. You're not a snake, and I'm not an Ocelot. We're men with names. My name is Adamska. What's yours? John. Very well, John. Plain name. But I won't forget it. Till we meet again, John. The introduction to the Phantom Pain was breathtaking. It really set the tone and the stage to make this game become what it was. Of course, first time playing this game, I don't think any of us realized that the majority of the story was mostly going to be based on cassette tapes. Of course, a lot of people missed what was going on in Metal Gear 5 because the cutscenes or the codex wasn't mandatory enough for us to get a good idea what was happening. Of course, Ocelot was meant to be the guardian for Snake. He was appointed by Cypher to watch over him, including Venom Snake, to make sure he completes his mission successfully. As much as I love Metal Gear Solid 5, I think constructive criticism is due in time of areas where I think it's needed. Especially at this point within the game. Well, well I'm sure I'm you'll, sure see, you'll the see the bigger, bigger picture, picture eventually. eventually. This has to be a wasted moment of potential, as here Venom Snake is in a vulnerable position, and of course he plans to stop Skullface. In a moment like this, it makes no sense. Skullface could stop Big Boss right here, right now. But what a wasted scene with massive amounts of potential. As Ocelot could have been in this moment, guns blazing, guns spinning, making sure that Venom gets out of the clutches of Metal Gear. In every Metal Gear Solid game, Ocelot has always had a piece of the action. And in Metal Gear Solid 5, he has none. In fact, I don't think we see any cool cutscenes with Ocelot using his revolver and doing some mad, amazing gun-spinning skills, taking out several enemies at once, showing us how badass he is like the majority of the games. Yeah, yeah. Whilst yes, Ocelot is back at Mother Base trying to train Snake's private army to become really well-trained soldiers, at the same time, we get to see nothing in terms of him trying to show demonstrations of how good he is, at least showing him shooting his revolvers at some targets, anything. I mean, don't get me wrong, this scene was brilliant. It was a nice short-lived piece of nostalgia, remembering back from Metal Gear Solid 3, the famous lines that Snake said to Ocelot all them years back. But I still can't understand why the majority of the game was put into cassette tapes. I mean, there could have been way more cutscenes they could have capitalized on, making this probably the best Metal Gear game of all time. Engravings... ...give you no tactical advantage whatsoever. That was some fancy shooting. Pretty good. Oh. 
Ocelot was in a fair few cutscenes in Metal Gear Solid 5, but it was more quantity over quality. Like Commander Miller was in barely any cutscenes, but you could tell with the amount of cutscenes that was there, there was a great deal of quality that made up for the lack of the appearances that he had in the game. But of course, it's not to say that the scenes themselves wasn't impactful or great, it's just that I think with Ocelot's character, what is he doing back at base training puppies and dogs when we see him in every other game, be it a badass gunslinger getting involved in the action? But that's not to say that it doesn't open up parts of his character. As I said at the beginning of the video, we find out new things about Ocelot we didn't even know, such as being able to train the likes of Dee Dee into becoming a super espionage dog capable of carrying out all kinds of different missions. So I guess we learned that Ocelot was super talented at training dogs for military warfare. Ocelot raising hounds. Fine. Yes, Ocelot is keeping busy back at Mother Base making sure things are running alongside Commander Miller. But at least have them revolvers and put them to good use. Instead of shooting fucking propellers on a helicopter, wasting a lot of money. I mean, are we even dealing with a real Ocelot? This guy would be twirling that gun for two minutes straight doing all kinds of flip tricks. Quiet's a fantastic character, don't get me wrong, but I really feel like they could have sacrificed her out of the game just so we had more cutscenes with more important characters. Wait a minute, that thing cost a lot of money. Once we extracted Quiet back to base, it was also cool to see, like, a homage to the Ocelot unit from Metal Gear Solid 3. But once again, it was just a small little dosage of nostalgia. It offered nothing really of anything of interest. And in fact, we had this new character called Quiet that came along. In my opinion, if we had to remove her in replace for Ocelot to be Snake's guardian or buddy within battle, I assume much rather would have preferred that big course of exchange just for building on to more lore and story onto an important character. I mean, Quiet was killed off at the end of Metal Gear 5 anyway. And like with the mission Metallic Archaea, it was just completely lackluster at best. I mean, Ocelot at this point in the game, we could have seen him make an appearance here, perhaps giving Snake some kind of form of assistance, if you will. I mean, we did see him, but at the course after the fact of the battle, in the helicopter where he just seems massively reserved than his usual self. Of course, we see no action from him at all. It was just very underwhelming, giving on the connection between Ocelot that and the love that he has for Big Boss. They definitely could have built on towards the bromance between the two by showing us some cool co-op action between them. See, the only bit of action we did get to see of Ocelot was on the Metal Gear Online trailer. But that's not to say that Metal Gear Solid 5, of course, would be a disappointment in the development of his character. Because Metal Gear Solid 5 exemplified what it was that made him so damn good at being an interrogator, a detective, and a means of extracting information out of his enemies in order to get information that he needs to advance on his mission. In fact, it ties in with Metal Gear Solid 1 so well. And that's face facts. If Ocelot didn't extract the information out of Huey the way that he did, they would have never found the location of Salampropus, hence shutting down Skullface as a whole. It dives into the whole reason behind his intelligence gathering, the ability to be able to psychologically torment people through means of torture, which all ties in and adds to the darker side of his character. Okay, B Zero. The Salanthropus is beyond the Soviet base camp, in a lab built by the Soviet philosophers. That's what you're looking for. But I have no idea how he's controlling it. It wasn't designed to accommodate a human pilot. I fought wars in Afghanistan, Mozambique, Eritrea, and Chad. Among the Mujahideen guerrillas, I was known and feared as Shalashaska. I was trained by the Russian Gru. I am not like one of those KGB slugs. To me, this isn't torture. It's a sport. You're all just a bunch of sadists. Thankfully, in Metal Gear Solid 5, there was a great deal of amount of pieces that tied in with the main story lore of Metal Gear as a whole. And that's the reason why it was such a brilliant game. Of course, it just had its moments where it should have expanded onto more of the character. The point I'm trying to make is that MGS5 fails to recapture some of the most other important aspects aside from the ones that we saw in MGS5. 
Changing the voice actor for Ocelot for me wasn't a big deal. In fact, I think it was the right move considering that Josh Keating at the time suited a more younger styled Ocelot compared to more Troy Baker's Southern American nicely matured voice that suited Ocelot perfectly well. You make a great team. I think you'd be a wonderful addition to the Diamond Hawks. You're pretty good. Ocelot is one of my favorite characters aside from Big Boss. Metal Gear Solid 5 was a beautiful experience and the ending and the twist at the end made it all the more the thriller that it actually turned out to be in the end of things, which really would add a nice interesting new take, especially towards the MSX games, realizing Big Boss had a body double. There wasn't really much in terms of action scenes that were quite underwhelming on Ocelot's part, but I definitely think that adding this last moment between him and the real Big Boss was a definite scene that they had to add, and I'm so glad they added it at the very end of the game, because it truly was an emotional farewell to this franchise as a whole. Move, move now, quickly. Aren't you forgetting something? We'll meet again. Right. I'm not going to lie when I say I had myself a tear in my eye at this particular moment because it was an emotional way to say goodbye to the entire fan base as a whole as Kojima was going to be no longer working in Konami or no longer have rights to own the IP from the beloved franchise that he created from the very beginning of the early days of Konami. Well guys, that's all I have to say for today's video. Let me know what you think about this. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. This has been The Voice Box and I'll see you soon.